trying to do everything to keep him happy. He's, he's not only the largest pig in the world, but he's also the most pampered pig. There, now are you comfy? Big Norm died on September 13, 2008, from what appeared to be a heart attack. He wasn't the first oversized pig, and he won't be the last. The fossil record shows the first pigs date back about 20 million years, originating in Southeast Asia, and later spreading to Europe and Africa. And their first home in North America was probably Florida. The first true pigs that were brought by Christopher Columbus on his second voyage in 1493. These were eight select domestic swine that he picked up on the island of Gomera in the Canary Islands. Took them with them as a, as a form of walking food, walking larder. These animals were turned loose into the wild to forage for themselves. A number of these animals didn't stay around the colonies and became wild. They established wild or feral populations throughout the eastern U.S. and in parts of the southwest. The captive pigs evolved to become the modern domestic farm pig, bred by man to be the ideal meat-producing animal. By the 1850s, massive slaughterhouses had sprung up in cities like Cincinnati, Ohio, to meet the huge demand for meat. Most domestic pigs stand about two feet tall and weigh between 90 and 260 pounds. The largest wild pigs stand three feet tall and weigh up to 500 pounds. The flatter skulls and longer legs, giving them the ability to run much faster. Over the years, these wild pigs have continued to roam the woods. And many are still out there today, scavenging for food, crowding out other animals, and breeding faster than ever. As wild pigs continue to thrive, the problems they cause are magnified. And make no mistake, these animals are the source of lots of problems. As far as the damage that these animals do to their host environment here in the New World, the list is almost endless. They root up our wetlands, they devour our agricultural crops, they compete with our native wild species. In Abbeville, Georgia, and the area that surrounds it, Many residents rely on farming to make a living. But packs of wild pigs have been attacking the very source of their livelihood, their crops. One farmer has tried everything to keep the wild pigs at bay. Traps, dogs, but still, the animals have ruined most of his harvest. Last year, feeding them for 450 a ton, at a ton an acre, that's $450 an acre gross that we could have expected out of the crop. But they got it. I mean, they wasn't nothing for me. And I didn't even get a pork shop out of it. Hog hunting has changed a lot, though. Used to, you could go out here with a strike dog and a catch dog, and he'll catch him or uh, strike him up, and the hog would defend his territory. Come here, boy. But now, now they don't. They run. This is probably where they're staying. On one hunting mission, these dogs managed to corner a couple of wild pigs, but a whole pack of them had already slipped away. Woo, got some teeth on it. There was about close to 30 hogs in this one group, and the dogs finally singled this one out, and the other ones run off. They ain't gone far. This is a young hog. <laughs> Two years old, probably. <laughs> but you can see, he throws a small hog. He has a real good teeth. <laughs> the most dangerous teeth are the tusks. These short, sharp incisors are a pig's best weapon for guarding against whatever might come after them. Sometimes these beasts will fight back. And sometimes they'll just bolt. They just don't stop. We've, uh, we've got a population of runners out there now. It just, if they don't stop and bay up with the dogs, you don't get the pig. Dogs can only do so much. And as the sheer number of wild pigs continues to rise, communities have had to turn to other solutions. In Alabama, game warden Chris Zlewinski has a novel method for hunting wild pigs. He patrols his 6,000-acre hunting preserve with a thermal imaging camera and a rifle. With the feral hogs being mostly nocturnal during the summer months, 
this technology allows us to find them at night and uh, be able to harvest them. Without this equipment, the chance of seeing a feral hog just with the rifle and the spotlight would be pretty slim. When we're looking 250 yards down the road, and if there was a hog standing in that field, we'd be able to pick him up. There he is, right there. Right there. And soon enough, Chris picks something up on his camera. Right there. Tell me when you're ready. Ready. All right, here we go. That was about a 300 pound pig. But picking them off one at a time is never going to be an effective method of control. That's where large scale trapping comes in. The most we've caught in a day is actually 17 in a root door type trap. The specially designed cages have to be built high enough and strong enough to contain wild animals bucking for a way out. We're going to bait the sides, put a little bit of bait right around that trigger, and like I said, hopefully we're going to get multiple pigs in the trap. Somebody's going to run out on the sides, go over to where the tripwire is. Once he hits that trigger, the door's going to fall. Hopefully we're going to have a trap full of 10 to 12, 14 pigs. Uh, the great thing about it, though, if more pigs want to come in, they just push the door open, it falls back behind them. So, again, it's a one-way door. Once they get in, they're not getting out. 700 wild pigs are trapped each year on this property. But even that's not enough. Studies have shown that to keep a population stable, you have to cull seven out of every ten pigs. In Fort Worth, Texas, two wild pig attacks have shaken local residents. A woman and her dog attacked on a desolate road. And a photographer fending off a pig with his tripod. A Florida college student had an even more harrowing encounter when a wild pig chased after her right in the middle of the quad. If that's not bad enough, there are some towns that seem to be completely overrun by wild pigs. In Abbeville, Georgia, these feral fiends aren't just confined to the woods. Packs of them have been coming right into town and getting to know their neighbors. Abbeville resident Janice Brown was forced to take matters into her own hands when wild pigs started to invade her backyard. Because some of them do get aggressive and they'll come and chase you if you let them. Probably the straw that broke the camel's back was the day I came home and they were in my front yard. I don't want hogs in my yard. So I took, I guess what you call desperate action. <laughs> Went in and got my husband's rifle or my rifle and let loose on them. After a while, we got rid of all of them. And I haven't seen any lately, but when we walked through the woods earlier, we saw there were still evidence of hogs in my yard. Many people think of pigs as lazy, lumbering beasts rolling in the mud. Those who face them head on paint a different picture. They say these sinister swine are aggressive. 400 pound specimens with razor sharp teeth. Animals that can charge up at 30 miles an hour. Try out running one of those. One South Carolina man knows just how quickly these animals can launch an attack. Sheriff and National Guard officer Fab Burt went face to snout with a wild pig and was lucky to escape with his life. It was a day just like this when Sheriff Burt came home and the animal charged right at him, knocking him flat on the back. I tried to cover my face up to protect my face from hogs. It was such a surprise, so I panicked really. Then the Bobo came over to uh, help me. And I think without Bobo, well, I might not be here today. Two weeks later, Sheriff Burt found the wild pig. But the vicious animal wouldn't go down without a fight. We shot a hog about 13 times before we were able to take him down, and the hog estimated to be about 500 to 600 pounds. If being assaulted in your own yard isn't bad enough, how would you like to find a wild pig where you least expect one? In the living room. One Louisiana man was just minding his own business when a pig charged right through the front door. When he stomped his foot to shoo off the unwanted visitor, it pulled straight for him. He endured bites on one leg and both hands. Police tried to track down the offending animal, but it had vanished.